Overtones can be incredibly frustrating to practice. But it actually doesn't have to be like that. In this video, I'm going to show you tips and tricks that will help you to master your overtones a lot faster. I wish I would have known these things when I first started out practicing overtones. It would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of frustration. First, I will talk about some ground rules that you should be aware of when practicing overtones. And then I will show you some tricks for specific overtones that are especially difficult that can help you to play them immediately. You have to have a clear imagination of the overtone before you play it. If you cannot imagine the overtone, it's going to be really hard for you to produce it. To sharpen your imagination, the first step in practicing your overtones should be to sing it. Here's how to do it. To sharpen your imagination, play the note you're aiming for with your regular fingering. In this example, I'm playing a C on my tenor saxophone. Then sing it and try to perfectly match the pitch. Do this as long as it takes for you to match the pitch perfectly. This is in general an amazing way to improve your ear, so definitely no time wasted here. I often see it with my students that they are changing way too fast from one note to the next. It's very important that you take your time with this exercise. Let me show you why. Let's for example say you're aiming for the first overtone of C. First play the regular C of the second octave and really take your time to get used to it. Listen to how it sounds, experience how it feels in your oral cavity, your throat, etc. Only then switch to the overtone. While switching, really clearly imagine the sound of the C continuing. By taking your time like this, you're getting much closer to what happens and are much more likely to succeed. You might have found out that when you tense up your amateur, it actually helps you to achieve certain overtones. But actually, this is not a very good way to do it. You're quickly going to run into problems, especially in the third octave. In general, the more relaxed you stay, the easier it will be for you to produce especially the higher overtones. So I would highly recommend to you that as soon as you notice that you tense up in any way, take a short break. The overtones are manipulated by your oral cavity and your vocal cords. The amateur barely plays any role at all here. So try to keep your amateur relaxed and steady. Here's some proof that this works. Since the oral cavity plays such an important role, in manipulating the overtones, it can be a great idea to try out different vowels. What works when is a little bit difficult to say, since it seems to be different for everyone. When you try it out, make sure to first say the vowel out loud and pay close attention to what it does to your tongue position. Then try it out while practicing your overtones and see if it helps. The more you experiment here, the better. This is very important. Don't practice overtones for too long, otherwise you risk tensing up and damaging your vocal cords. Just do the overtone exercises for about 5-10 to 10 minutes a day and then move on and forget about it. Okay, so those were some general tips for practicing your overtones. Before we move on to the next part where we we'll talk about some tricks for certain overtones, if you like this video, I would be very happy if you would leave me a like. I'm also continually updating my channel with new content, so in case you don't want to miss out on this, make sure to click the subscribe button. Now back to the overtones. Sometimes you might find yourself unable to play certain overtones even though you practiced them for some time already. In my experience, the first B flat, the second A and the second B flat prove to be difficult quite often. There are some tricks that can enable you to play those overtones immediately that I will share with you now. The B flat of the first octave can be a difficult overtone to produce. If you just start out with your overtone practice, I would advise you to first tackle C. As soon as you get C going, 
you can just play C as an overtone and go from there to B flat as an overtone. This should make it a bit easier. The second A is the second overtone of D. This is an overtone that is often difficult to achieve at first and that needs quite some time to practice. Here we can basically apply the same trick as before. First we play a second G as an overtone of C. Then we play from the second G to the second A by changing our fundamental note from C to D. The third B flat is the third overtone of B. Again, we are using the same trick as before. First, we play a second G as an overtone of C. Then we go to the second A as an overtone of D and then we finger the low B flat but go up to the third overtone of the B flat, the B flat of the second octave. Of course the final goal is to play the overtones without these tricks, but being able to produce them at all is already a big step in this direction. At last I would just like to mention one more time that it's very important to be patient here. Overtones need time to be mastered. Let me know in the comments if those tips helped you and if you have any questions. See you next time.